Hi guys, it's Diane from Art of Craft. Today it's going to be about using scraps and making books. I love making these books, they're lots of fun. Again, I have a very dark style and that mightn't be your style so you can go as feminine as you like. I've used the Zutter to actually bind my books here but you can um, use your cinch or they absolutely look fabulous if you even just lace them through. They look gorgeous if you use leather and lace them through. These are going to be quite thick books so I have used large rings on them. Now I've used the Zutter chipboard covers to do this because I like to actually make a cover that's larger uh, for the actual book and then place another piece on top. It makes it incredibly strong. If you don't like these rings, for instance, on the Zutter, you can get the Zutter covers like this, the cover all covers, and they have a spine on them. And this one I'm actually going to cover in metal at some stage. But you can put uh, your decorated piece on top. Now, the reason, another reason why I like to do this is because I like to make all these just out of scraps when I'm doing them. And I just have them sitting there and then I can easily place them on a book. Um, when I when I want to. Um, I'm not having to do the whole cover at once. I can decide later. So I basically take these covers, decorate them up, ready for when I'm going to do my project. Jason, obviously you can see Jason's influence here. He's made this. And of course we've used grunge paper and grunge board like this because of the flexibility that it has and the way we can curve it around corners nicely. I like the strength and I like the look of it and the fact that I can emboss it and it won't rip or do any of those things. But this is quite steampunky again. We're on a steampunk sort of thing at the moment. And that is actually a photo of Jason's eye that we have um, put an epoxy over. But it's actually the colour of his eye taken in, into uh, the light. Um, it hasn't been altered at all. And then it's just been decorated up. We've used, again, the Viva Decor and the different colours. We've painted with studio paint. We've shaded around the edges with the black. Uses it, used our cropper doll to put studs in. And this back here, this is all grunge paper and board um, because I like, I like the way it feels. It's like leather. Um, so we've made that one. Um, Got a bit of stamping in here with one of Tim Holtz's stamp. Um, we haven't decided up what we're actually going to do with the book, so we decided to put in a variety of pages in that one. This is uh, one that I made. Now, this is what I mean about making things out of scraps. Now, I know that you all have your dies and you all cut things out, but you don't always use what's in behind. For instance, this. This is a piece like this is. This is the piece that comes out of this die and you can raise it like I have on this particular piece and put cogs in that on it and decorate it up and um, those are just domes of some sort um, and use your colour to create an effect on your book. This is actually going to be a steampunk book so it actually has some steampunk images in there. You can see I've done the back here as well um, and again that's from inside the dies. There's some really neat shapes in there. There's also, I love the grunge board, uh, which I've got very few of them left. And I don't think you can even get them on the market anymore. Uh, when you see them online, you'll see them with just this, but they actually have a whole lot of different patterns in there. And you will see where I'm using this particular one here, I think is out of this one. Um, this is out of a, a heart one, where I have cut, this is the scrap here, and these are actually the hearts from the grunge paper, and the grunge board. And I'm going to show you how to do some others that are in this, this package. You've probably got some of this in your stash somewhere, that you've just sat there. Hopefully you haven't thrown it away, because what a waste. Uh, just the works exactly the same as these. What a waste. Even if you have cut it out of card, cut many, many layers of, of it, so you probably haven't cut one, but you've cut three or four, well, layer them together so you can get some strength into it to make the, these inside pieces. 
and this is just another book uh, my sister was down and she wanted to learn how to do it so we showed her and she liked the freeform look so she used words and uh, one of these oh, die cuts and again this is the peacock feather made some tags, Tim Holtz stamp used um, doily back there to colour up colour up your doilies in the, on the inside of this one you can see I've used doily back here as well they don't have to be uh, white like these you can just colour them make them pretty make them metallic put them in behind today I'm going to be making one using the Tim Holtz tattered layered angel wings we're actually going to make it into a butterfly and I'm going to be using the scraps out of this particular piece that's in the grunge board pack this is stripes and elements and there's 94 different shapes in there so you get all the shapes but we're going to be probably using that one but I, can I want to show you a little bit about what you can do with the others Oh, we're also going to be using your Viva Decor, your Claudine Helmer Studio Paints, uh, your Viva Decor, this is the Ferro Metal. We're going to be using Tattered Angels Glimmer Glazers. We're going to be using Perfect Pearls. Now the reason why I'm using the, all these different things is, I don't know what you've got in your stash, but you can get these effects using many different products. So it gives you an idea of the spread of products you can use to create the effects you want. Mm -hmm. of these pieces but I am going to show you a couple of things now I asked Jason to put some of these eyelets in and as usual we are all about doing things quickly and what happened was they went in there crooked this doesn't line up very well and although I don't mind imperfections I don't want it to look I want it to be strong and I want it to look good so I'll just show you how I would fix that because these are the scraps out of those packs remember so I can't easily replace them I will just get these domes uh, actually this one's crooked here and it's going to be placed there I'll just probably put a couple of those in there and just line them up so that will be straight and I think up here where this is quite wonky I'll put one of the, these the, these pieces of vintage pieces I think I'm going to put that little heart with a keyhole in it and I'll just put the key there when I stick it down and that'll solve that problem so if you make mistakes don't worry about it just find something to cover it make it better and so that it looks good now you saw where I got all these background pieces from but I'm also when I cut out my um, tattered angel wings or layered I should say um, angel wings you get pieces like this now you're going to have to cut it out quite a few times because I actually am going to layer in an extra one of one of these sizes in there I haven't I think I've decided which one but I've also got these back pieces now those back pieces are what I am going to use or I have used to do this and I've just cut them out how I wanted them and now I'm going to stick them down like this and I put this piece here again I've got my eyelets because this is going to be the back of the book but I've yet to shade it and put in those details I'll do that on camera um, as I'm going along 
when I've painted the backs of these, I've made sure it's painted rough. It's not going to be a smooth, beautiful effect because I want a rough texture back there, just like this has got a rough texture. Mm. Okay, I realized with the reflection of the perfect pearls you probably weren't getting a sense of what I was doing because I was doing this in the evening and the light was shining off the perfect pearl that I was putting on there but you can see the detail now this is what it looks like um, I'll get in closer so you can see a little bit more and we have um, the pattern on there off the stamp being reflected off the perfect pearl to give a really nice finish and the fast finish over the top really finishes it off nicely and now I'll make the butterfly to go on the front of the book these are going to sit on the back pages back and front pages like this the butterfly will go there and this again is going to be repeated that for the back of the book now we're going to make the butterfly you can see where I've partially made it here I'm filming this in low light so you can actually see what I'm doing with all the perfect pearls on and the reflective surfaces I'm using. This one I've already put together, or half of it I've put together. It's made out of the layered angel wings, Tim Holtz layered angel wings, and this can be used for lots of different things. Um, and I've used it for many different things, but the, today we're going to put it into this butterfly. Now what I have done is I've cut it out, and I've actually layered it dimensionally using these um, foam squares, 3D foam squares, you can get them in a couple of thicknesses and it means if you want really thin layers so you can curve surfaces over you can use those and put the thicker ones where you need them. But in this one I have just layered the first layer very thick, the next one a bit thinner and then I have put this vintage piece on the top and I, um, I've sanded it off using my block so it gives you a beautiful Sand, this block sands, sands the metal and it also polishes it on the other edge 
so you get a nice look on it. And that again is going to be layered on there and I'm going to put, use those dimensional, greedy dimensional foam squares to lift that up because they're very strong. Um, unlike some squares that just tend to just pull off. And I'm going to make the other side here. All I have done for this is I have, you saw me put this on in, in, in earlier in the video, it's the Golden Metal Effect Ferro Viva paint on there. And then I have just used a combinations of Perfect Pearls, um, dampened down to just to add a little de definition. Not too much because after all it is going to be covered, but you want variations in colour. When you get things that are just all one colour, even though it, this isn't a real butterfly, it looks really unnatural and too perfect for me. Here's, an, here's another one that I've made um, for another project. The next layer that goes on there is, this is these have been cut out of grunge paper because I like the, th the strength of it. You could cut it out of cardboard, that, but this is the front of a book. It's going to take a bit of, of battering. All I've done with this is I have painted it with gesso, and then I have sprayed it. I don't really need to show you me doing these things because it's very simple. I've just sprayed it with a bit of the Perfect Pearl Mist because of the intense colour, just a little, and then done the edges. And the last layer, I have used um, a combination of my Perfect Pearls um, just to, to paint on there and I've actually used um, a bronzy collar on there as well uh, but you'll have lots of things in your stash you can use you can layer it with metal you can emboss it there's just a ton of ways to do this and this is just painting or spraying to layer it on there to do the edges to get a neat look a tidy look we haven't done this one yet all I do is I get another cut out that's the same line it up like so get my paint or whatever I'm using in this case I'm using a bit of paint put a little bit down there and I'll just use that to make that nice edge on my pieces so use this piece as a mask might be a better one I can use here this piece perhaps you'll be able to see what I'm doing then. We'll just put it like so and then I'll get a bit of this paint, smooth it out and do the edges. You can just go around with the ink blending tool but I think I said earlier if you want a more precise look just use another cut out as a, a bit of a, a mask so you can get that nice edge. And I, I'm going to, I'm using paint. I did try using the archival ink but with the rough surface, it didn't give me a dark enough line in my opinion. So you can see where you can get a precise edge. And you just do that on all the edges. And you do it on this one as well. Um, I have just sprayed that and then I have gone with a piece the same size as that and gone around the edges. If I can find a piece the same size as that. I can't. And then I'll layer this up and all I'm going to do is layer it up how I like it with my dimensional dots decide where I'm going to put it on here I'm also using um, some other trinkets these are all vintage ones I will cut this to make the body of the butterfly and I'll put the other wing on and maybe put some words down here um, at, at some stage so let's see how we go with that I don't think you need to watch me do all that the only thing I'm going to do after that is I'm going to stick this down onto my book here, um, my my sort of page that's it's going to be bound, and I do this on the back as well. I think I mentioned that before. I like I like the sturdiness of it.
but here is the back of it. This one I have already done the cover, or well, the inside cover page. That's the outside cover page. And this one I have got to line this page. Now I've used a 7 Gypsy paper for that, this one here, which looks very different to that, obviously, so I've needed to colour it up, and I'll show you how I did that now. So I'm going to be using this piece here to do my back cover. And you want to line these up before you attach this front piece to the back piece to make sure you're going to have it up the right way when you put it on. And I won't show you this on camera, but when I put them together, I use Fumango tape, which is an extremely strong tape, and just cut strips. But it's double-sided tape and push around the very edges of my work like this this is just the tape upside down peel it off put glue in the middle and stick it to my um, front cover and like i said i always make lots of these size covers and then i just join them it makes it such a, a solid book any bits hanging out over the edges there's all sorts of things you can do like if I because I never measure anything properly I just get myself a big huge pair of scissors and trim them off um, if you like to use a craft knife you can use that and you can also go around the edges and give it a bit of a scuff up because you're going to be putting another layer of your fast finish decoupage over there anyway so I'm going to be using the Tatted Angel Glimmer Glaze on these the two colors that I'm using here uh, cowboy and orange crush. In fact, I might just pour a little bit on here of each colour. You now it's got that little brush, which is very good for precise. You must shake these bottles really well, which I've already done. Unless you're wanting for just the clear glaze, and then you leave all, leave all the mica sitting in the bottom. It's got a resist in it, so when you stamp over it, like I've done here, you're going to have to use your archival links. If you want it to layer up with lots of colours, you're going to have to let it dry in between. And this is where you can disguise near the edge if you haven't made your piece of paper big enough. glossy accents to make sure you've got no bubbles and if you've got a bubble in there just use a pin and take it out but I always find it's easier if you just put your glossy accents around the edges and fill it into the middle and get a nice thick layer so the last thing we'll have to do is to make our pages which I've already made mine here and I like to colour the edges and I've just used um, some of the Viva Decor rub on the edges you can use paint you can use what you like so there goes this color this book will be a lot thicker because what I like to do is you can buy this these are all made out of the Zutter pages which is actually a card I will insert these into the book just like this and then I will use the seven by five pieces of cover of um, inner paper the Zutter inner paper and it will actually just cover in here nicely and as I decorate each one it will go into the album so I can make it into an album I can make it into a day planner I can make it into anything I like so we'll put that all together and so here we have them a uh, selection of some of the books that I've made I haven't covered uh, this one here and this one here because I want to whereas on the pages of these I have, this is a pearlized paper I've used in this one, I have um, wanted the colour to go right to the edge. I'm wanting to put uh, some of the gorgeous range of papers in here to go with uh, the image on the front and I'll want it to run right across um, and then put my holes in. So I haven't done that one yet or this one, but these ones here are completed and you can finish those inner pages in a lot of different ways and put different papers in. As I said, this one's pearlized. This one I've used 
really distress the edges and put gold paint on. Um, this one here, I have used the Viva Decor just to put an edge on those papers. This is the one that you saw me made, and it's all, all completed now. I've put, I think I've mentioned this before, but I've put large rings on these ones because I intend to put envelopes and all sorts of things in, into them, and I needed the that bit of give to be able to put those in there. So remember to use larger rings and consider what your finished book is going to be like. And of course, do your backs um, on your different albums. Make sure you've got a back. This one I've left plain, and you can do this because this is very story. You can see the covers here are quite thick, and I've left it because I've really liked this. Um, it's a coordinations glitter paper, and the glitter doesn't come off. It's really strong. I will have a list of the different products I've used on the blog, and we'll also have some photos at the end of the video. So if you want to ask any questions. Um, you're most welcome to. I try to get them as often as I can. But I do want to mention that often the difference between how books look is in the shading. Um, we'll come a little closer here and I'll push this out. Like for instance on this one here. What I do when it comes to putting shading around, it gives your whole cover depth and dimension. But I'll just make a mask out of the same stamp. This is a stamp, Eleanor, um, from Angelica and Friends. Um, I will make a mask, put it down, and then I'll put all the shading around. Now you don't have to be an expert at shading, just put it down there. If you make a big mess, you can always paint over it again, it's no big deal. Um, the, but I find that sometimes when you're shading around like this, you get it all over um, the original. Especially if you're using, like I have, I have done the shading later, so I've had to use... Uh, the Ranger Archival ink to actually shade around here. But you can see how that gives it depth and dimension. You can see with this one here how shading the edges gives it that depth and dimension. Um, this one's been done slightly differently because I've actually used Perfect Pearl going around the edge to give it an edging and used the stamping to give me dimension. Probably I need to go a little around there like I said, no, for me, nothing's finished until it's finished, and so often I'll go back and do these things later. So there they all are. I hope you enjoyed watching, and we'll see you next time.